Hey everyone. In today's video, um, I want to show you how you can use generative answers on SharePoint list. Um, so as of today, uh, the native SharePoint integration for generative answers only covers SharePoint sites, but does not include uh, SharePoint list. Also, there is no uh, direct semantic search API available uh, for searching data that is within your SharePoint list. So for today's demo, I will show you three different design patterns um, that you can use to reason over your data within um, SharePoint list. Uh, these same design patterns can be used on any custom data source that allows um, searching for data using a RESTful API. Uh, one thing to do things to keep in mind when um, selecting the right design pattern is um, first, you want to make sure you understand how your data is structured within your data source. And then the second most important thing that you want to keep in mind is what outcome do you want your copilot to achieve uh, when the bot is making the search? So let me explain this with an example uh, just to make it easier to understand. So for today's demo, I have two SharePoint lists. So I have a leave request application. So this list basically tracks all the uh, requests from employees for leave. Um, you can see that every request has a unique identifier or unique ID uh, that I can use to identify each request uniquely. So for the first scenario where I want my co-pilot co uh, co to uh, allow employees to search for um, their leave request application status. I can actually ask employees to provide the leave request ID and then provide them with the updated status. So if I go back to Copilot Studio, um, you can see here um, I have a um, option for checking the leave status. So employees would click this and then the copilot would prompt them to enter their leave request ID. So in this case, if I put eight, what this does is it will uniquely identify the record in that list and then create a um, answer uh, along with link to that specific record. So if I click on this link, it takes me directly to that specific record within that list. Um, and here you can see it has provided me, provided me with the latest status. And um, the way I have done this is I have a topic called check leave status, um, which gets triggered when I request uh, for a status update. And then I have a plugin, which is basically using a Power Automate flow to get the data from a SharePoint list. So going back to the Power Automate flow, um, this is how I have designed the Power Automate flow, where I take in the request ID, then I'm using the get items action, uh, which allows me to search for a specific uh, record within the list. So in this case, I want the ID to be equal to the request ID that is provided by the user. And then I just format the data and pass it back to the chatbot. So now within the chatbot, once I have the response back from the plugin, I just format it in a way such that I can use it on generative answers node. So if you look at this, it's using a custom data source. So custom data source could be any um, data source that you would like to use um, that is not covered by uh, native integrations uh, that are supported on Copilot Studio. For example, SharePoint, public website, uh, or OneDrive locations are natively supported. Uh, in, event, in an event, you want to integrate this with any other data source, you could just use this custom data source um, uh, to provide the data and then generative answers would use that um, to create a summary. Um, just to show you how this has to be configured. So you can see here, um, I have a custom data uh, source that's being passed here. So you need to create a variable that is in a table structure um, and then just pass it here. And then uh, 
you can provide any custom instructions uh, to format the response. So in this case, I'm saying you are employee assistant chatbot, answer in a friendly manner, and then I'm providing an example of how I want the response to be structured. So that's the first scenario, which is pretty straightforward because we are able to uniquely identify each record in the list. Um, and using the Power Automate list item action, I can easily pull that record as long as I have the unique identifier um, available within, as part of my uh, topic or conversational flow. Okay, so now for second scenario, um, I'm going to use a different list. Uh, it's called FAQ Tracker, and this has question answer pairs. Um, so this would be um, similar to uh, any of your uh, list that tracks uh, frequently asked questions or po policies or procedure kind of uh, kind of a list where you have question and you have a response. Um, one key thing to keep in mind is every time you have a multi-line column within SharePoint list, it does not allow you, or Power Automate Flow does not allow you to use that um, column to do any kind of um, searching or filtering. Uh, your filters can only be applied on a single line column. So with that in mind, uh, the second design pattern uh, that you can use is you want to target a column that can basically uniquely identify each record within your data set. So in this case, you can see each of these each of these questions are unique. So I can use this title column to search and uniquely create a response back. Um, so based on users' questions or utterance, I will understand the intent of that question and then search only in uh, this specific column to see if there's a match. If I find a match, then I can pull in all the details or all the other columns associated with that specific record. So let's see an example here. So if now I go back to my um, chatbot uh, and I'll restart here. So this is the second scenario where I'm searching on a list that has a lot of text-based columns. So in this case, I'll say list search and I can ask a question like, can I use corporate credit card to buy tickets for my family? And what this does is it will trigger the right topic. It will call a Power Automate flow and then create a response along with link to that specific record. Uh, one key thing to highlight here is if you look at the question from the user, this question does not match the data that's within this column, right? The key here is to understand the intent and not just simply do a string match or text match. So for that, what I have done is I am making use of a topic. So you can see every time the user is asking a question, it triggers, it captures the user's question or utterance, and then it's using this flow, um, which I'll show you now here, which passes the question that user has asked, then I'm using a using the prompt builder within Copilot Studio or Power Platform to understand the intent of this question. So in this specific example where I asked a question, um, it will uniquely identify what the intent of that question is. So if you look at that question here, uh, it's asking, can I use my corporate credit card to buy tickets for my family. So that this prompt um, helps me understand the intent and then extract the information that I need. Uh, just to show you how I created this prompt, you can see here's an example um, of the prompt that I have created. So I'm saying uniquely identify product, software name, building name, historical event, cost, city, and person from the given text. And then I have um, provided some examples. So this is an example of one shot prompting where you have an example so that the model understands what information to extract from a given text. So using this prompt, 
I'm able to understand the intent of the question. Um, and then I'm using the get items uh, action within Power Automate to search for that specific text within this list that I showed here. With So using that text, I'm searching this column and then getting the response back. So this is scenario two where um, I'm first understanding the intent. Uh, you can see here, understanding the intent of the question using a prompt, and then using that intent to filter the result from the SharePoint list. Once that's done, I just format the data and send the record details back to Copilot. And over here, again, I'm using the um, custom data source. So within generative answers, I have configured a custom data source that allows me to format my answer and provides a link to the exact record that user can then uh, go to uh, if they need to update or check any information. So that's scenario number two. So the key thing to keep in mind for this uh, scenario is the search is targeted on a specific column, which is very unique. Uh, so every question in this uh, column is unique. And then you also can identify the intents of, or intent associated with each question. So as long as you can do that, um, you can use this uh, second design pattern where you can target a specific column um, to uh, provide a response based on the intent of the question. But there might be scenarios where you might have multiple columns that you would like to target. And all of these columns might be multi-line text. Um, so in that scenario where you want to uh, reason over a SharePoint list that has um, uh, multiple multi-line text columns, uh, you need to make use of uh, Graph API. So that's going to be your scenario number three, where um, you can search across any column within your SharePoint list. So in this example, if you look at um, this column here called content, um, this has uh, multi-line text. And what I'm going to do is I'll ask a question that is related to, or the information is available within one of these um, rows here within the content column, but th there's no way for your co-pilot to uniquely identify the record. So in this case, so if I go back to my um, co-pilot here, I have a action that allows me to search using Graph, a Graph API. And for this, what I can do is I can ask uh, something like victory in the American Revolutionary War. Um, when I ask this question, you can see that this information is within one of the rows with, um, within the content column. Uh, but there's no direct question that is associated with um, with this text. So in this case, you can see here, um, it's providing me a response along with the um, link to a specific uh, row. Um, and if I go back and open this record, you can see the content um, column here has reference to uh, this text here. So this is how it was able to uniquely identify a specific row within the list. So same way if I want to ask a different question. So let's uh, look at this. So I'm going to click on graph list search. And this time I'll ask, what is the contribution of native e Egyptian agriculture laborers? So this text is within one of the rows within that content column, but there's no direct reference to this text. So what we are trying to do is understand the intent of user's utterance or user's question. And then once we have the match on the intent, it will search across the entire SharePoint list um, to provide a summary and then list all the records that match uh, 
that intent. So in this case, if it had to pull uh, from multiple columns, you would see multiple links, but since it's pulling from a single column uh, or single row, um, we have only one link. So if I click on that link, it will take me directly to that specific record where um, we have reference to uh, native Egyptian agricultural laborers. So this is how you can use Graph API uh, to optimize your search uh, when you're working with a SharePoint list that has multi multiple multi-line columns. Um, the advantage of this third design pattern is you're not restricted to a single column. Um, you can search across entire um, SharePoint list to find the information. Um, so just to show you how this has been designed, again, I have a separate topic, which is used every time I call that action. Um, so this topic gets triggered. Uh, I have a flow. So if I go back to the flow here, um, this flow is slightly lengthy because of all the manipulation you have to do to get the data in the right uh, format. So you can see I'm passing the user's question here. Um, and then I have initialized a bunch of variables. But the key actions here is first, I'm making use of the same prompt that I showed you so that I can understand the intent of the question. Then I'm calling the graph API um, and then searching with the intent rather than user's question. Um, so in this case, uh, I'm using the extracted information from user's question. Um, and then once I have the response back, I use um, all these uh, actions within the flow to format it in a way that I can pass it back to Copilot. Once the answer is um, found, uh, I just make use of the generative answers node. Uh, in this case, again, the data source is custom data because we are working with um, a RESTful API. So uh, in this case, it's a SharePoint list, but this same design could be applied to any other data source. Uh, so as long as you format your result correctly, so just to show you, here's an example. So this is um, this is the format that it expects. So you can see, this is how you can create the uh, table that needs to be passed to this um, generative answers node. Um, and once you pass that, um, it, you can use the custom instructions in, in case you want to format the response in a, in a uh, certain tone or uh, you want to give it an example, uh, you can do that using custom instruction. So um, that's how you can make use of um, any data source in order to uh, create a summary and also provide a reference to the original data source. Um, the last thing that you have to keep in mind is when you're working with custom data source, uh, you can only provide the top three results from your search query uh, to this gener uh, generative answers node. If your table that you create here has more than three rows, um, it will only look at the top three hits or top three uh, search results and exclude any information that um, that is not part of the top three hits. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So making sure your search is optimized is going to be key when you are working with custom data source. So these were the three different design patterns I wanted to share since um, we get a lot of questions around um, integrating Copilot with, with uh, SharePoint list. Um, I hope this was useful. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching. Bye.